So you want to turn your fat into muscle. Well, today I'm going to tell you how you're going to be able to do that, how long it's going to take, and how we're going to transfer from body weight, fat loss, visceral fat, and muscle gain. So when it comes to losing weight, we have to understand that Weight loss can happen within a matter of hours or even days. In fact, if you went into the hospital and they needed to drain fluids from you, they can do so within a matter of minutes. And so when it comes to weight, we gotta understand that weight loss is actually really easy. We all know that on a weekend, we can have a bunch of salty foods, a bunch of carbs. We're probably not drinking as much water as we should. And so those carbs sit in your system for your few days. Carbs require a lot of water to be digested and then pushed out of your system. And so your body's going to hold water for a few days before it flushes it out. But weight loss is one of the easiest things that you can do. But if you're looking to lose weight and consistently keep it down, then that requires a caloric deficit for a matter of weeks to months. So if you wanna lose weight and you wanna keep it off the healthy weight, then what you need to focus on is being consistent at least 21 to 28 days, and then try and push yourself to two to three months so that your body can create a new stable weight. Body fat is actually tough to lose because if you were in a weight gaining cycle, Eventually, your body can only hold so much weight before it actually starts storing it as body fat. That's the next level. First, you'll gain weight. Then, once you're done gaining weight, your body will then start to gain body fat. And with body fat, it just doesn't happen in a matter of days, weeks. It requires months to even years to accumulate and eventually just sit in your system. Now, what ends up happening with your body fat is that they just kind of implode once they all kind of reach their 100% capacity and then they just continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So as you lose weight, the body fat does not go away, it only shrinks. And that's why you'll notice when you go on an extreme diet plan is that you'll lose the weight and then if you fall off and then you go into a binge cycle, you'll find that you're actually going to gain more weight because the body fat is already there from your last weight gain cycle and it's still there and then you start adding more body fat so there's more fat cells to absorb more of the calories so you can eat more and your body's like, hey, that's okay, I got the fat stored for it. So it just continues to grow, expand and implode. So when it comes to losing body fat and you jump on a scale and you notice, hey, I lost 10 pounds in a matter of 28 days, but why is it that I only lost a half a percent to 1% of my body fat? Well, we gotta understand that this has been months, even years of consistently gaining fat. But even if you lost 1% body fat, you gotta put that into perspective. So let's say that you are 180 pounds and you lost 1% body fat in a matter of 30 days. You gotta look at 180 times 1%. So you drop 1% body fat. That's 1.8 pounds of fat that you lost. And fat is big and it's fluffy. So 1.8 pounds of fat, if I were to bundle it into my hand, would be about this big. So imagine taking this much of fat from all different areas of your body and just shrinking it, right? Again, fat doesn't go anywhere. The fat cells only shrink, its contents only shrink. So you've decreased the amount of fat that are in each cell. And so 1.8 pounds of fat is an actual significant number, but it requires months to years of consistency to reverse all the fat that you've been gaining over the last months and years that you've been gaining the fat. Now when it comes to the visceral fat, first off, what is visceral fat? Well, it's that deep fat that sits into your vital organs. It's the fat that has bypassed your body fat. So body fat is easy to pinch, right? We go and pinch our stomach and that's between the muscle and the skin, that's body fat. Now the visceral fat, you can't get at it unless you can put your hand into your, into your organs and get into your liver, but otherwise it's the fat that has gone past your body fat and it's now sunk deep into your vital organs like your heart, your liver, your stomach. And this is the fat that creates plaque. This is the one that builds uh, buildup. This is the unhealthy fat that you do not want to see. And it's because the fat has seeped through its natural storage and it's gone deep into your body and now it's creating health problems for you. So your visceral fat, if you're over 15, then you've got potential medical problems coming up. 
every person that I've seen come through the gym that had a visceral fat of 20% or higher. So they jumped on the scale, they used the body scale, and their visceral fat was 20% or higher. Within 16 to 24 months, they all had some type of heart problem. Whether it be a stroke, even a mini stroke, or whether it be some type of heart attack or even a mild heart attack, I read about it on Facebook. And I don't see them, they usually didn't last that long, but when they jumped on the scale and I'm their Facebook friends, I do see that they have medical issues with that high visceral fat. Now for the average person walking through the door, if you're around 7% or under, that's generally considered healthy. If you are close to 10%, then you're on that verge of being unhealthy visceral fat and you could have some type of health issues. Now because this visceral fat is that deep years, like years to decades of fat that's being built up internally, you won't see a high number like your body fat. Some people walk through the door and their body fats are like 40% higher. You won't have a 40% visceral fat. The highest I've ever really seen was 22. And so for most people, they're gonna be between 10 and 15. So that's not high compared to your overall body weight, but it's still high considering that that's the scary fat. And so for you to actually see a visceral fat number drop even by 1%, that's a significant number that's going to add years of quality life to your life. And so visceral fat takes years for a percentage to drop. When it comes to adding muscle mass, we gotta understand that you can't have muscle if you don't use the muscle. And muscle becomes complacent very quick. So what do I mean by that? Is that maybe you start activity and you start walking and you start walking, you hit 10,000 10, steps, and you do this for six months straight. That's fantastic. You're gonna see your muscle mass go up. You're probably gonna see some weight loss as long as you don't start eating more calories, and your body fat's gonna decrease slightly. Visceral fat probably won't make that big of adjustment unless you've made major changes to your nutrition, but otherwise, you will see a small muscle mass increase. But over time, that 10,000 steps of walking, your body has said, this has become my new normal. And so you need to increase the amount of activity you're doing. So you can either increase the amount of steps you're doing. So if you wanna see, let's say you gain 1% muscle and you wanna see a half percent of muscle gain over the next six months, then you're probably gonna to have to go from 10,000 to 20,000 steps. If you wanna see more than that, then you're gonna to have to go from 10,000 to 30 to 40,000 steps. But honestly, at this point, why not just go to the gym? Right? And why not do the training like we do here at Fit Club? The reason why these workouts are designed how they are is because we want to attack all of those systems. We want you to drop weight, drop fat, build muscle, and work on your visceral at the same time. And so when you come to gyms like Fit Club and you're doing high intensity cardio, such as like burpees or box jumps or going on the ski machine for 30 seconds all out, and you're also doing muscle movements like ball tosses, squat and row, battle ropes, where there's resistance along with movement, and lastly, lifting heavy weights where you're exerting the muscles to push out more energy than they're used to. We can all lift a book off, the, off a table, but can we lift a 20 pound book off the table and can we do it for 30 seconds straight? And that's how you're able to add on more muscle over time, is that muscle requires consistent overload, it requires consistency of doing it often, and it requires more challenges in order to see that number spike up. But when it comes to muscle, it takes that big of a jump where you have to go from 10,000 steps to 30,000 steps, and you have to do it for three to six months consistent, like every day, because once you stop using that muscle, you lose it. You're not gonna lose it all right away, but muscles only wanna give out as much energy as you require on the day-to-day -day basis. So if you're spotty with your workouts and you're not doing your workouts as often, or you get 10,000 steps one day, 20,000 steps another day, no steps the day after that, your body is just going to give you the base minimum. So if this is where your average is, you're gonna sit below average of what's required. So your muscle isn't gonna go up unless you're challenging it and you're consistently challenging it over time. So that was a long video, but honestly, if you watch it to the end, your knowledge base is poof, way out there. So what I want you to do is give the video a like, make sure that you are subscribed, and if you're looking to get started or you're looking for advanced nutrition coaching, then go to our website, www.fitclub.fit, send us a message. If you're a current member, let's talk about doing the belly burn, let's really challenge that muscle and attack it in different ways. We can have that discussion with your belly burn coach, we can make that happen. We'll see you on the next video.